The Windows registry is sort of like a giant database containing all of the different settings and preferences that Windows checks on startup, launching different programs, you name it. And it's a crucial component of Windows, really, because it helps your computer run smoothly by remembering things like how programs should work and how your system should behave. And all of this is referenced by registry keys and values that represent the data of the key. So let's jump in. And in this lab, we'll learn how to access, navigate, and modify these registry keys and their respective values using the registry editor. We can access the editor by typing out the word registry, which should pop up with the registry editor. And this is it. This is the application right here. It's very simple. And in the left-hand pane, we'll see these folders that all start with H key. And this is a little confusing at first, but the H key stands for handle to a key. And in the Windows registry, keys are sort of like folders that hold various settings and information. And the term handle refers to a way for the operating system to reference or access those keys. So H key essentially indicates that it's a way to handle or access keys within the registry structure. And each of these H key folders are often considered to be called hives because they sort of act like the structure of a beehive with all these little different compartments for different purposes. So let's walk through them at a high level. The H key classes root hive is sort of like a dictionary for file types. It tells the computer how to open different types of files like documents or pictures. Next, we have the H key current user, and this hive remembers settings for the current user who's using the computer. It stores things like desktop background, colors, and personal preferences. Next, we have the H key local machine, and this is sort of like the computer's memory. It stores important information about the computer itself and the software installed on it and configured. Then we have H key users, and this hive just keeps track of settings for all the users who have accounts on the computer. So sort of like the current user hive, but for all the users. And then finally, we have the H key current config, and this is a hive that helps the computer know how to work with its hardware, like monitors and printers, sort of like a guide for the computer's different parts. And yes, that's a lot to take in. There's no way you're gonna memorize all of that at once. Take some notes, come back to it as you need, but that's just a high level overview of what these all are. So if we expand and sort of navigate walking through each of these hives, we're going to see folders underneath them. And these folders themselves are the registry keys. And then there are sub keys and sub keys and sub keys. And then inside of these keys, when there are no more sub keys left, we'll find values. And so different software and services refer to these keys to get their value and then use the value for different purposes of why that software service exists. And for example, I'm going to navigate to the H key current user hive of software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, run sub key. And this is a very unique key as it is almost something to be like a to-do list for Windows on startup. We can create entries in here to tell Windows to start a program, for example, when the current user logs in. And Windows will be able to understand that by us providing values in certain keys. If we right click here, select new, we can see some of those values. A string, for example, could be a way for us to indicate a certain folder or file location. And other commonly used ones like D word could be used to represent a binary value of zero or one to, to say that something is enabled or disabled. We also have the Q word, which is a 64 bit version of it. And this provides us a longer and larger numerical value for other purposes as well, like file size. And then we have other things like binary, which could represent an example for an icon that has a hex value of so many different types of hex value digits and that could represent what the icon looks like on the desktop for example and that starts to get pretty complex and advanced and we're not going that direction so all what we really need to do at this point is just get you to understand how we can utilize one of these key value pairs to perform a function such as let's have the computer open up the notepad application upon startup for our current user login so let's use a string value here and we'll give it a name. We can call it something like run me. And that would indicate what the purpose is or the name of this value. We can double click it, select modify, and we can provide value data here. And this is where we would specify the notepad application. So let's open it up. 
and then open up task manager to again identify the location on disk if you didn't have any documentation handy to reference so right click it and again we will go over to properties and then we're going to see where it loads from system 32 cool so let's go ahead and copy this inside of the value data and we know that the application in this case is notepad.exe so we'll specify that and then hit okay sweet okay so we actually have a value here that will run and execute notepad.exe upon login and now we can do something kind of fun where we can export this object and if we save this say to our desktop maybe something like backup we actually have a registry object now that we can share with others if we maybe we had a patch maybe we fixed something and then we can share it with others who are running into an issue with some of their software and they can import it inside of the registry so let's walk through that let's actually delete the run me value and then we're going to import it back in and just demonstrate how that process can be completed awesome there we go so now it's back in place and if we shared this fix or shared this run me value with others that also wanted to start up notepad.exe for whatever reason they could do the same and then they could fire up the application upon startup okay cool so let's see if this actually works let's restart the computer now and see if it starts up with notepad running when we log in all right back in action now let's let everything load get all the systems up and running and any moment now we should have notepad running for us perfect there it is now we're ready to write whenever we log in so let's go and actually delete that so that we don't always have notepad up and running whenever we log in let's go back inside the registry editor it should default where we left off delete that value hit yes and we're good to go okay so that was definitely one of the more complex labs for windows module and the registry will take some time to understand. And again, you don't need to worry about memorizing everything about it. Just remember more the concept of why it actually exists. Just trying to remember that it's a giant database, just serving configuration data for software, hardware, and services. And you'll come back to the registry time and time again as you learn more. And that's really when you'll start to develop a better understanding of things and where they belong and why such as inspecting why a startup string value is specifying a malicious script or program to run. That's when things start to get exciting.